Mic check. All right, let's do this. Hey there. So the title of this talk here is Why Your Business Isn't Making Money Online. Um, probably a different title could be How You Can Make More Money With Your Business Online. Um, this particular video is going to be focused on smaller businesses, um, often larger businesses, you know, and, and there's something to be learned regardless of the size of your business here because larger businesses are still, um, you know, trying to find ways to make more online. Um, and it's, you know, it's true. Smaller businesses are too, but I find that I talk to a lot of small businesses that's that want an e-commerce site and in the end, the conversation is, is, you know, I'm disappointed. It's not making the money that I thought it would. Now, let's get one huge piece out of the way right now. Just because you have a website and, a, and an e-commerce site set up there does not mean that your business is going to make money. Um, your business product has to be good and marketing has to be involved. Um, if your product's good, and I don't mean you think it's good. I mean, if the market's proving that it's good and you are doing proper marketing and you're still not selling well, there's some broken pieces in your process. Now, this would probably come to your website as well. I'm, I'm sorry, this would come to your business as well, not just your website, but your website is a ref should be a reflection of your business. Um, I think I've referenced this in the past, but I've known companies who have the most ugly 1980s looking website. Matter of fact, I bought a bike from an online bike seller um, recommended by a buddy of mine who is a big bike nut. Otherwise, I would have never given them a cent. Um, I bought a bike online from this website that looked shady. Like, to, to put it bluntly, they looked shady. Their website was so poor um, that I... Yeah, I bought the I bought the bike because of the recommendation. I wouldn't have shopped there otherwise. And that goes a long ways because their product was good and their price was right. That was a big part. They were a a uh, for the same bike you were saving a certain percentage buying it directly through them. Um, but their marketing was good, their product was good, and their price was right. And so, regardless of the website, they sold. So you're like, Dan, hey, you do websites, you do e-commerce. Why are you telling me that this junky website can sell? Why would we hire you? Well, therein lies, lies the thing is that your website is not going to be your business's magic bullet. It will reflect your it will reflect what your business is doing. And then the better your site, the better optimized, the better your marketing, the better your product, everything just gets better. So taking that same bike example, had they put together a professional looking website, they would sell just that much more. As a matter of fact, I, I don't know this. I'm, I'm just theorizing based on 20 plus years of experience. But had they put together a really good looking website, they would have ended up probably doubling their sales. I, I'm not even lying. Um, and, and, and it was an old, per, an older gentleman who has had the company for years and just kind of stuck in his ways and it's working for him. Um, but it could be working so much more. So why is your company selling very little, not selling, or maybe not reaching the goals that you have for it in sales online? So obviously we talked about product, we talked about marketing. So let's look at your website specifically itself, because that's a big part. Now, you can find tons of videos on there why you should hire somebody to build you a website and why you should build it in Shopify or build it on Wix or build it in Squarespace or all of these reasons. Everybody's got a reason why you should use them, use their product to do better. Hold on one second here. Okay, coming back here. One of the beauties of working uh, from basically, I'm in my backyard because my team's all remote 
is that we have we have kids and they just let themselves in my office. So that's that's cool. I like it, but I had to pause up for a second there. So um, yeah, everybody wants you to use their product and they're telling you how they're going to fix your problems. I'm gonna back up here because yes, I could join that fray and say, hey, Wapiti can fix your problems. I know we can, but that's not the purpose of this. The purpose is to give you something real to work with. And whether you choose to hire Wapiti or you choose to go a different direction, that's your choice and I'm cool with that. The first thing, for me, the biggest red flag is a web design company that says we build beautiful websites. And we claim that we build good looking websites as well. It's not an inherently bad claim, but when it is a headlining claim, you're specifically hearing their message that they're gonna build you a great looking website, but 90, I don't know, I'm making up numbers, 95% of the time, the website looks pretty, but is not engaging for sales. Let's take the big boys, for example, Amazon. Nobody goes to amazon.com and says, this is a beautiful website. There's nothing beautiful about it. It is utilitarian and extremely functional and Amazon makes more cash in a day than most of us will ever sniff in our lifetime. So what is, what's the deal? Why, why beautiful? Okay, so, so Dan, you just gave me an example earlier about an ugly website and how it was selling. Are you telling me I need an ugly website? Well, no, 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 I'm not. But if the headlining deal right there is we make beautiful websites, you're probably gonna pay a premium for a beautifully graphically designed website. It could look gorgeous, but that doesn't mean it's gonna sell. Okay, so let's go back to the other example of the, the actual real life example with that, with that bike company is they had an ugly website, like period, ugly. And they were selling, but what if the website looked better? What if it looked more professional? Um, once again, looking at Amazon and, and not all roads lead to Amazon, but they're a great example of how to succeed in this space. And they have the millions, probably billions of marketing dollars behind how their website looks and works. Their site is not beautiful, but it's also not ugly. It's very clean. It's laid out properly to highlight the products, to highlight what they do. So if you've got all your pieces in place, the first thing to do is look at the website. You do want it to look good. You don't want it to be a showcase for a designer, unless that showcase is also a showcase of how the designer can sell products. Um, you don't want it to just be a showcase of what that designer can do. Um, you also don't want it to be ugly. So, so kind of the opposite of what I just said. You don't want it to be ugly. You want it to convert. And so therein lies the marriage. So, you know, these these builders, like say say Shopify, for example, and, and I'm not anti-Shopify. I like Shopify. Um, I just prefer uh, doing custom. With Shopify, they make the conversion process a lot easier for you from the platform perspective. You can get these themes and so forth and templates that, that make your site have a specific look and you can kind of customize those. Um, there, there's a beauty to that because you don't have to know a whole lot and you can have a website up and running. And for somebody who is gonna refuse to hire a professional to do it, Shopify is probably your best bet. Um, you can find some okay looking free templates. You can also pay a little bit of money and get some premium templates that actually look relatively decent. Um, there's some that are really good. I'm not trying to undersell. Uh, but in the end, part of this process is having somebody who actually knows how to convert, who actually knows how to insert a call to action, who actually knows um, how to highlight your product so that it shows up properly. Um, because anybody can build a website. Anybody can sell a product um, or try to sell a product is a better way to say that. Not anybody can sell a product. So so kind of backtracking again, and I, I keep going back just because I want to build up into this. Um, obviously your product's got to be good. You have to have marketing. You have to have some messaging behind your product. Um, sometimes in that marketing are you know deals to get people intrigued and interested to join in and to try it or to sign up for XYZ or uh, to take a course. Um, or in the case of a nonprofit, if you're, you know for example, a church and you're wanting somebody to donate, um, you know, highlight, highlight who you are and um, bring them through that process. So once you've got that, so, so, so 
so then you've got your, your, your foundations, obviously, and you build on those foundations. So I, I kind of wanted to, and I'm a little scattered here. I apologize. I, I have a list, but this particular list um, kind of detours from what I'm talking about. But I want you to keep what I said in mind as I move into this list. And I'm not going to necessarily cover everything in my list. I just kind of wanted to, to use it as my... Uh, my guide and I'm, I'm not going to show this on camera. You're just going to have the benefit of looking at my face while I talk the whole time. I'm sorry. Uh, so, so let's look at specific types of companies um, and how those companies are set up for success. And we're going to look at some of my company's examples of clients of ours um, and how we've created their site to set them up for success. So actually, I wonder if let me hop over here and try maybe do some screen sharing here. I haven't used, I haven't done a live stream in like forever and it's not like too many people probably ever watch this, but um, in case you do, I had one person pop on here at one point. They probably left already. Uh, in case you do, uh, I wanted to show, let's see, let's make sure close off some things just so I don't have any confidential client stuff pop up while I'm while I'm screen sharing close that close that forgive me for the uh, little bit of boringness right here and I'm gonna put do not disturb on so I don't get you know some sort of a loving text message from my wife in the middle of this probably wouldn't be uh, kosher okay so let's go over here let's try the screen share thing I've got set up all right, so my video is not set up, right, set up right at all, so let's just do this on the fly. Um, we're gonna do video capture device. So just we're gonna deal with deal with me here for a second while I just get this set up, which I probably should have already. But you know, being uh, being prepared is usually something I am, but at the moment here, uh, it's not. So move that frame there. All right, this pre-built frame does not appear to be built for the aspect ratio of my camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this to the side. And I'm going to push my camera off there. I got to zoom in. I can't hardly see. Let's see. Move that window off. And... Bring this down. Okay. Now I can see a little better. Now, I must be getting old. I don't know why I can't see things. Okay. That mostly fits my camera. Okay, cool. So now my screen share is not showing up. So let me add that in. I thought this was preset. I am going to share to window capture. Add source. And... Okay, I think that's gonna work. So the question is if I click this, okay, it gets way too full screen. All right, so let's go back. Instead of window capture, sorry, if anybody does watch this, this is boring, we'll get there. We're gonna go, there's a whole display capture, that's what I'm wanting, add source. Sweet, so now my screen is on here. You can see my Streamlabs running. I just need to size things properly. We're still going. We're still going. We're going to get there eventually. Now you can see the inner workings of how streamers do things, except I'm a bad streamer. So the, real, the good streamers do things the right way. Okay, so now I need to put this in a different order. Yay, now we got the Vortex. Got to love the Vortex. Display capture. Okay. So if I hit this, you might get a little vortex off to the side, but you should be able to see my browser window. Maybe I'll just go full screen for this so that we can kind of see kind of see what we got going here. Okay. So we built this website for Simon. Um, Simon lives in the Netherlands. He's a, a client of mine. Um, fairly recent website. One of the things I like about this site is to me, this is the marriage of conversion and beauty. So this isn't an overly designed website. You know, if, if you were to hire a high-end graphic designer to build a website, 
there's going to be more frills. There's going to be more things to it than this. However, this is a nice looking website. This is one that's made to truly highlight what he does. So you see, as I scroll down, you can see, you know, the different types of bows, the accessories, you're showing some arrows. And of course, photography is a big part. So if you sell a particular product and you took hand shots with your iPhone in a corner, um, you're probably missing the boat on that. Um, I worked together with another buddy of mine who has an agency. Um, he did the photography and videography for Simon and it really highlights this site. Without, without that, um, this site would just fall on its face. And so that would be another part of how to sell more online is ensure that your product photography is great. And once again, if you need a recommendation, um, I've got that recommendation that this gentleman and his team, it's actually a team of people. I shouldn't make it sound like one guy. I just know the owner really well. Um, they do an amazing job. So, so as we scroll down, uh, just kind of start at the top here again. I was just kind of scrolling to show you how the site kind of looked. But so first off, we've got, um, you know, some, some slight animation. So if I were to hover show collection, you'll see it kind of creates this arrow effect. Just something to kind of show, you know, we're talking archery. And while that's not an actual archery arrow, it kind of blends in with the thought and with the process, right? And then you scroll down and there's a highlight video of a gentleman walking through the mountains, through the, through the woods with the bow and arrows. Like once again, videography and photography make a big deal to how you can sell a product or just highlight your company in general. Scroll down and then we start going to more of the shopping experience. You can actually see, you know, what he wants you to do. So a little bit about him, the look kind of generally talks about uh, his company and what, what he builds. Immediately, here's how you can look at the products and buy, which we'll get to. Just a beautiful highlight image. Some testimonials from people who have purchased bows from him in the past. Um, and, you know, depending on where you get testimonials, in this case, it's not how we did it. But in some cases, you would want to make them clickable so they can click and go straight to Google, straight to Facebook, wherever those were left because it's a, it's a social proof and it's a proof of uh, a proof that that was not a made up quote. Um, not saying his are made up at all. They're definitely not. And his bow's amazing. I actually have one in the corner over here. Um, but that said, uh, uh, that's a way to make sure that people can trust your reviews as they can click it to go actually read the review. And then of course at the bottom, you'll see there's a leather background. He uses leather accents and so forth for the bow handle, um, which we'll see as we look a little deeper. So with that, this website, you know exactly what you're looking at. You are looking at bows or bow related things without, without, I mean, just right here, you know, there's something to do with bows. And of course the name helps with that. But as you scroll down, you realize that he's actually selling recurve bows, horse bows, and then accessories for the bows. Now, just looking at this, this page, you've got pretty much two calls to action right off the get go. You have his in stock page. I'm not sure if I would pick in stock to be my call of call to action, but he knows his industry a whole lot better than I do. And he said that people who are interested in his bows want to know what he has in stock because they're handmade. So he doesn't keep a huge backlog. So if somebody wants one of his bows, they don't want to just browse ideas of a bow. They want to browse the actual bows they can buy. And so by clicking on the in stock page, now we get just really dice. Boom. Like there's no more, I mean, it's not ugly, but there's no more beauty. It's a straight, clear uh, way for people to purchase his bows. And they can directly go, um, they, they can directly add, or you can select uh, the arrow pass, which would be that, that leather piece. He has like eel skin leathers and um, so forth. So, so right here, you'll see the video loads at the top. Um, you've got the bow, you've got, you know, some ideas of how um, the bow would look, you know, all sorts of fun photography. You've got a little chart um, that I don't understand enough about archery. I'm, I'm excited to use his bow more and learn more. Um, but the chart shows, um, you know, regression curve and so forth. Um, and then you have the ability to choose the poundage. So um, you can get the, the right strength uh, of bow for you. And then, of course, the arrow pass, um, which, you know, you can go suede, um, Stingray black skin. And he doesn't have it this way, but you can also set it up to where if you click one, it shows the image with that red skin on there. Um, now, in this case, uh, going back to the in stock page, some a lot of those aren't available. Now, he could put any skin on the bow. 
So actually in that case, they were all available. But if you were to go to a different bow that maybe he didn't have the right poundage in stock or whatever, um, you, you don't want to buy it. So the in-stock page is important for people to do this. So that's why to him, that's a call to action. The other call to action on the front page is the show collection. Once again, we're going straight to the purchase. And if you're selling something like this, going straight to the purchase or to a specific purchase is what you want to do. Um, you know, I, I've worked a lot with coffee companies, as I've said in the past. And one of the things that we, we often will do is a subscription coffee system. And so um, depending on the company, some companies just want to offer that alongside everything else. Some other companies want that to be number one. And so if you go to the landing page and you see all their coffees and, oh, hey, I can purchase, you may not sign up for a subscription. And so if you're one of those companies that wants people to sign up for a subscription, you want to make that clear off the get-go. Yes, they can still purchase a pound of coffee here and there, but you really want them to get on your, your shipment program so that you get the recurring business. And once again, we're really big on recurring revenue models. So, um, yeah. So, so back to this, going through his website, you can kind of see how this is built. So that's just one example. Um, trying to think, whoa, I, think I, I closed down my notes so I could share my screen. Some other examples. Um, so there's a gentleman, uh, and I'll share his website, um, who he does custom t-shirts and, and he does some you know hoodies and some other things too, but kind of t-shirts are in his wheelhouse. Now this is a little bit older site that we built and um, it hasn't seen a lot of life on his end. He wanted to self-manage. That said, his products aren't really changing. So he's probably just really happy with, with how the site looks and functions and how it's laid out. Um, but with this, one of the things I want to highlight about this is he is a subscription, like he has a subscription program. And so when you look at this page right off the get go, you see a, a good looking dude wearing a, a t-shirt. Um, so you know that there's some kind of style thing involved with this. Of course, it's tea house company. So you kind of put two and two together from looking at the website. Um, you know, you can see kind of it's, it's all day comfort with a purpose. I'm not sure what the purpose is other than wearing a shirt, but, um, you know, it's his marketing and his clientele probably know what he's talking about. Um, and I bought from him and it is actually really comfortable. Um, no, not wearing it today, but, um, I, I have quite a few of his shirts. Um, but you'll see that there's literally a call to action. You've got two buttons and actually three buttons with the learn more above the fold here, above the fold means what loads up in the browser right off the get go. But there's one button that just sticks out and that's subscribe and save. He wants you to subscribe, <coughs> excuse me, and get uh, his shirts on a regular um, deal. So if you click that, you can come in and you can see the shirts that he's selling. He's got all sorts of uh, you know information and subscription benefits on the side here, and you can choose. And so some people, uh, you know, they want to get you know, like right here, uh, all, uh, all black 3T subscription, and you can get it from every three months. And I don't remember if we left it at just three months or let me click in here. Like I said, it's been a little while since we've worked on this website. Okay, so you can get it once a month, every two months, every three months. Um, you know, he might at some point want to open that up because I'm not sure how many people would need to get three shirts. You know, basically, if you got three shirts every three months, it'd be like getting a shirt a month. Um, but, you know, if you, especially if you like work outside a lot, your shirts will probably wear down and you'll probably want to replace them. And, um, you know, that's, that's something that, that, that may work. Um, that said, you can subscribe and get that on a regular basis. So when we go back to this homepage and, and one of the things about this website too, I just want to highlight this. It's different, but not too dissimilar from an Amazon style layout, right? Like it's not as cluttered because he doesn't have as much to sell as Amazon, right? You're not going to see 500 products right above the fold when you load it. But what you will see is you will see what he is. And then when you scroll down, you get into this kind of clean grid system, not beautiful. No designer is going to look at this site and say, this is a graphically designed website because it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be a clean sales website. Now there are things of flair, like you know the hover effects where you hover the t-shirt and all, now you see the gentleman wearing the t-shirt. Or in this case, he changes pose. Like there are things to give it a fun fill. And, and so when I mean not graphically designed, I don't mean ugly. I mean, it is perfect for what he does. Uh, you know, and this is obviously we built it um, and it's a little older, but 
it still applies. Like this, this suits his company exactly. Um, you know, and at the bottom we highlight a foundation, um, and maybe this is the purpose he's talking about, um, is the Jed Foundation where he donates towards that. Um, but yeah, just a generally clean, good, functional e-commerce site. All right, I think I'm gonna stop with two highlights for now. Um, you know, I've got to have content to make more of these in, in the future. And I don't make these very often. Anyhow, I think it's been two or three months, maybe four since my last one. Um, but yeah, so let's, let's head back. Let me get out of this full screen mode, head back here. We're going to go back to full camera. Hey, I didn't mess that up. Um, so, so, so the premise of this is why don't you sell enough online or whatever? It, it's really, how do we sell more online? And so when you're looking at your website, um, because this is my realm websites. There are so many other things, by the way, like if you sell, for example, t-shirts, I would highly recommend looking at an online marketplace, um, or, or building your own and we can do that. But looking at something like Amazon or Walmart, you know, it depends on your brand. Like in his brand, he probably wouldn't want to go on Walmart because there'd be competing messages. He's high end, but, um, looking at these online marketplaces and seeing, if you can get your product into those marketplaces because that gets you in front of more eyes. Um, but but yeah, coming back to the web side of things, having that clean call to action and having a website that is visually appealing without being, you know, once again, you don't want your website to be an artistic masterpiece, right? You want it to be artistically nice, but you don't want to be, to, to go, you know, I've, I've been on these really cool websites. Like I enjoy the sites, but there was one, it was, uh, uh, I think it was Whirlpool made something called Water Drop, if I remember right. And this is now pretty common, but back in the day, it was one of the first websites that used the scroll effect, where as you scroll, there's a central focus on this Water Drop thing, and you know, things are falling, and it's pulling apart and coming back together, and Apple uses it quite a bit now. I think their HomePod page or something, or their their old Mac Pro page used to do it too, where it scrolled down and you had that canister Mac. It looked, it looked kind of like my water bottle here. Um, and it would pull apart to show you the insides and the internals. Well, this water drop page was one of the first to actually do something like that. And I loved that web page. I'd go back over and over and over. But to this day, I don't understand what water drop is. Like, I'm guessing it's a filtration system. I probably could go look it up and know. Um, and if you're watching this, you may be like, well, duh, Dan, it's this. But my point is for as much as I love that website, I didn't care about the product because it wasn't actually selling me a product. It was selling me a very cool looking web page, which I wasn't buying. I was just enjoying uh, using it for free at their uh, server load expense and costing them, you know, pennies. But um, so, so there may be people that works on, but realistically, you need to have an actual, like, you need to stay away from that. You need to get into something that actually sells. So kind of hammering the same point. So I'm on back down now, but, but, but yeah, just in summary, if you need to sell more online, if you need to sell it all online, there are so many things outside of your website you need to get done. You have to have a great product. You have to sell well. You have to make connections. You have to find other places to sell it. Like there's a lot on you, but if that stuff's all chugging along, but your website's still not, there's a problem on that site. And there could be a problem in communication of sending people to that site. But in the end, to fix that problem, you need clear calls to action. You need a good looking, not artistic masterpiece site. And you need to understand what you have to sell. So. I didn't harp on this too much. I'm gonna just kind of end it on this point. As a person who believes strongly in, in recurring revenue models, monthly, annual, depending on what you are, weekly, daily, um, a lot of businesses miss the boat because they see their product as a product and try to sell it. That is only, that should only be a once, once in a while per customer thing. Really, once you've sold that product, if at all possible, that customer should be coming back on their own to buy it again. One of the things that recurring revenue models do is they 
allow the customer to do that without making them do that. So, you know, using the t-shirts, for example, if somebody really likes his shirts and th- thinks, oh man, I could, you know, I go through shirts, maybe, maybe they're construction worker or something. And I don't know that these are necessarily right for construction workers. I'm making up a scenario, but maybe they're construction worker and the shirts are just getting tattered after a few months and, or a year. And he's like, I need to have a continual refresh. Um, subscribing might keep them in stock with t-shirts and they don't have to think about it and they're not going to go to the competitor. I mean, one of this guy's competitors, um, I don't know if they call him a competitor. It's kind of like your local coffee shop saying that they compete with Starbucks, but is true classic tees. He, he really looks at them as who he would like to beat. And so, um, sorry, I keep noticing I'm saying this guy, I mean, you can't see my desktop anymore, but I got the little window off to the side of the tea house company's website. Um, but, but where I was going with this is, is, um, people might try and like his shirt and then forget who he is or, Hey, you know, I got to buy another shirt. Oh, let's check someone else out. And it's not that his stuff was bad. It's just that you gave him an opening to leave you, in which case you have to resell to them again to come back at some point. Um, and so something with these recurring revenue models is if you get them on and t-shirts may not be always the best subscription model. I, I, there's definitely a place for that, but you know, like coffee, once again, everything's coffee with me just because of my past, but with coffee, you know, if they try your coffee and then they're like, I'm going to try somebody else's coffee. Well, they can, I I try coffees all the time, but there is one coffee that I like enough that I want to have all the time so that if I get another coffee and I'm like, yeah, that's not for me. Or, oh, that was a good coffee, but I like my normal. I'm, ins- I'm ensuring it's there. I'm, I I do have a coffee subscription currently. Um, and so with that, the customer remains your customer. You don't have to keep selling them over and over and over in that way. Obviously, there's upsells and other products and stuff like that. But you're, you're retaining your business. You're retaining your customer. Um, okay, cool. So I'm going to wrap up there. Uh, this was sort of impromptu. So if you... If it seemed like I wasn't super prepared, I knew what I was going to talk about, but I wasn't. Um, So yeah, forgive me for that. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this. Um, If you do ever want to watch these, subscribe. Um, I like to use these for social media and stuff as well. So that's kind of my main purpose, but I would love to have people subscribe and watch these. Although I hate seeing myself on camera and the idea of people watching me live is semi-frightening and a little terrifying. All right. Thanks. And uh, yeah, have a great, great uh, rest of your day whenever you're watching this. See ya.